Well, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. Now, today I'm going to be doing my 20 favorite novels of all time. Uh, I did the uh, 20 greatest novels ever written, uh, but, but favorites and greatest, those are two different things. Uh, so I'm going to be doing uh, my, 20, uh, my 20 favorites. Uh, I'm going to not limit it to novels, though, because it just so happens that a lot of my favorite writers write a lot of short fiction. And uh, I'm only going to do, f I'm only going to do fiction uh, on this list. Uh, otherwise, it would just be full of Greek historians, and that would bore everybody but me. So we're go just going to do fiction today, and my 20 favorite fiction books, I guess, is what it's going to be. So, let's go ahead and get started. I'm uh, going to go 20 to 1, as we do in these lists. So, number 20 is kind of a cheat, because I tend to cheat in these things. And I'm going to consider all this one book, even though obviously, obviously this is not one book. But I couldn't let any of it go. This is the collected fiction of Arthur Mackin. I, I really, really like Arthur Mackin. Uh, not enough people know about this guy. This set uh, was edited by S.T. Joshi, and uh, he did a fabulous job. Uh, I got three volumes, volume one, 1888 to 1895. Got volume, uh, that's volume three. Where's volume two? Here's volume two, 1896 to 1910. And finally, volume three. This is 1911 to 1937. So yeah, it's not really one book, but I'm going to pretend. I'm going to pretend it's all one book. There you go, Collected Arthur Mackin, number 20. Love that guy. Number 19, something completely different. I love this novel. This novel is fantastic. This is the best, uh, could, well, it's the second best revenge novel I've ever read. It's it's a great novel. It is Best Served Cold by Joe Abercrombie. I haven't read all of all of his novels. I've I've read the trilogy. I've read this one. I've got other ones to read, but I can't imagine any of them are going to be better than this. This book is amazing. I love this book. It's just from beginning to end, it's just fantastic. It's just it's just a great fantasy novel. Man, if you haven't read this, you're missing out, because this is a good one right here. So, that was number 19. Uh, number 18, again, something completely different. And I'm surprised I don't have a better copy of this, because it's one of my favorite novels. This is Tender as the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And I just have this beat-up copy that I've read like four times or something. I got it on clearance for a dollar. Uh, and for some reason, I've never gotten around to getting a better copy. So I've got to correct that. Uh, obviously. But I love this novel. Um, I know it's not his best, you know. Uh, I know Gatsby's better, I know that, but somehow this one just uh, just got me right there. I really like this book. Uh, Tender is the Night. So I really like that one. Uh, so number 17, you know my tastes are all over the place. Uh, number 17 is the greatest horror novel ever written. It's Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. This book is just so great. This is just such a great horror novel. It's just the perfect horror novel. It really is. Uh, it, it accomplishes everything perfectly uh, for a horror novel. I've, n I've never seen a horror novel that just, that just does as well as this one does. It's just terrifying and entertaining and thought provoking. And it's got a scary cat, which is impossible. How'd you do that, Stephen King? How'd he make a scary cat? But he managed to do that in this book. It should be on this list for that alone. So there we go. Pet Cemetery, uh, number 16. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. This is just a fantastic adventure novel. It's amazing. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, by far, my favorite Jules Verne novel. 
This book is so much fun. I could read this over and over again. I could read this like every year and still be entertained by it. Uh, Captain Nemo, uh, the great Captain Nemo. It's just, it's just great. It's just, it's just so good. So yeah, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Fantastic adventure novel. Oh, look, it's more adventure. What a shock. Uh, number 15 is going to be Tarzan of the Apes. Yes, I really like this book. I really like Tarzan. Uh, I, I first read Tarzan probably when I was 15, maybe 14. I don't know. But uh, yeah, and I still I still really love this book. I love I've, I've read all the Tarzan novels. Love them all. Uh, so yeah, Tarzan of the Apes by Edgar Rice Burroughs. This is a good one. So there's that. Uh, what number are we on now? 14 is H.G. Wells, The Time Machine. I did a whole video on The Time Machine. It's amazing, like all my videos are. Yes, The Time Machine, just a fantastic adventure uh, story, time travel story, science fiction story. It's thought provoking. It's got scary creatures in it. It's great. The Time Machine. If you haven't read this one, man, read it. It's teensy. It won't take you any time at all. So the time machine. That was number 14. Number 13. This is another novel that I love, and I can't believe I don't have a better copy of it. I mean, this copy is just a mess. It's the case for the, with a few of these. Now, this is Victor Hugo's Les Mis. This book is just amazing. Uh, it's, it's gigantic. I know it's got its problems. I know that. But it's just a wonderful book. And I love it. And I love the characters. And I love just just about everything about it. I could have I could have used, you know, a couple less gigantic di digressions. But that's okay. You know, it, it was a wonderful book. It took me forever to read because it was gigantic and I was busy. But just wonderful. So, Victor Hugo's Les Mis, man. If you haven't read this book, read this book. I should do a video on that book alone. It deserves it. Uh, okay, so that was number 13. So now we're at number 12. This book I fell in love with one summer. I must have been about 16 years old when I read this. I just love it. Science fiction story by Clifford D. Simak. It's City. And it's sort of uh, short stories that are kind of interconnected that tell a greater story. It's one of those. Uh, but it's just done so well. And it's got dogs and robots. You know, two of my favorite things right there. Clifford D. Simak City. This is a wonderful, wonderful book. I love it. Another one that I could just read over and over. Pretty much all of these books are like that. So yeah. So that brings us to a number 11. And that is The Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett. Uh, I'm going to go with the version that's in this, the big book of Black Mask stories. There's a couple versions you can get, but this is the original magazine version. And it's printed just like it was printed in the magazine, Black Mask, when it was first printed. Uh, and there's not a ton of difference, but there are a few. And I just like this old pulpy version of the Maltese Falcon. Great, great novel. Uh, so much more than a pulp story. So much more than a detective story. It's amazing. The Maltese Falcon. You should read that book! Okay, so... That brings us to number 10. This is another detective story. How about that? Another really, really, really good detective story. This is Raymond Chandler's The Big Sleep. And this is the annotated version of The Big Sleep that was annotated by Owen Hill, Pamela Jackson, and Anthony Dean, Anthony Dean Rizzuto, which is pretty good. Uh, but you don't, need, you don't need annotations for this, really. Uh, but The Big Sleep... It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, book. First of the Philip Marlowe novels in the Philip Marlowe series. All of his, all of those books are great. Um, some are some are greater than others, you know. Uh, but uh, definitely, The Big Sleep is one of the great ones. Uh, you you might have seen the movie with Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart did a movie of Maltese Falcon and The Big Sleep. They were both great. You should watch them both because Humphrey Bogart's so awesome. But this book is fantastic. Just a great. A detective story. Man, The Big Sleep. It's fantastic. Okay, I think my dog's barking again. 
Shut up, dog! Doesn't that dog know that I'm doing a video? It's like, it's like she doesn't even care. Oh well. So, the next one, what are we at now? We're at number nine. Something different than that last one. This is The Lord of the Rings by Tolkien. Uh, this is my tattered paperback copy of The Lord of the Rings. Uh, it's got uh, The Hobbit. I'm including The Hobbit because it's the prelude, man. You gotta have the prelude to The Lord of the Rings for you to really read The Lord of the Rings, man. You gotta read it all, every little bit. Uh, and I love, I love The Lord of the Rings. I mean, I know everybody does. I get it, everybody loves The Lord of the Rings, but there's a reason everybody loves it. It's because it's fantastic. Okay, uh, now we are at number eight. The Count of Monte Cristo. Now this is the greatest revenge novel of all time. Also happened to be on the uh, greatest novels ever written list. It's just fantastic. It made both lists. Yeah, it's a, this is a great book, man. I, I don't know what I could say about it that you haven't heard before from everybody else. Uh, the Count of Monte Cristo. I know it's gigantic. You know, but if you're going to read a Malzahn book or something, you could read this. This is great. So, Count of Monte Cristo. And speaking of fantasy, number seven. You know what? You guys out there, you might think you're fantasy fans, but if you haven't read this next one, you're just pretend fantasy fans. Because this next one is number seven, it's Conan by Robert E. Howard. This guy, Robert E. Howard, he created sword and sorcery. Modern fantasy would be nothing without this guy, Conan. And it's a great character. Conan, the Sumerian, who, who made himself a king with his own hand. He went from being a, a thief in the streets, the lowest of the low, to the king of the greatest nation of his age. Man. Conan, man. What more is there to say? It's Conan. And this, is, this volume has all the Conan in it. You want to read all of it. Trust me. So, that's Conan. Number six. Another one that was on both my other list of the greatest novels and this one. Uh, this is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This book is amazing. You know it's amazing. Everybody knows it's amazing. And this edition is extra amazing. This was also on my uh, greatest classics of horror. Greatest horror classics, whatever the heck I called that thing. Uh, I should link that down below because that was like my second video or something that I did. Yeah. So, yeah, Frankenstein. Wonderful. So that was Frankenstein. Number five. I, I just love this book. Uh, another one by Edgar Rice Burroughs. And this, this one, I just I have a special special spot in my heart for this one because it, this book just can take you away like nothing else. This is A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Uh, just a great science fiction classic. Uh, it has influenced science fiction and fantasy. Star Wars would be nothing without this book, without A Princess of Mars and the subsequent uh, Martian series. Every one of the Martian books by Edgar Rice Burroughs uh, are great. They're all high quality stuff. Uh, so yeah, Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Fantastic. Okay, so we're at number four. Now this is a great book too. I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. You're all alone on a planet full of vampires. What do you do? Read this book and find out. This is just a wonderful book. It's amazing. They made a bunch of movies about it that weren't nearly as good as this book. This book is fantastic. It's one of my favorites. Again, I could just read this over and over. It's that good. I Am Legend. Yeah, this is a good one. Okay, so we're at number three. Some people are going to be surprised this isn't number one. I was a little surprised. When I put this list together, I'm like, wait a minute, is this right? But yeah, this is right. Uh, number three. Dracula. This is probably the novel I've read more than any other. I love Dracula. I just love Dracula by Bram Stoker. As I've said before, numerous times, uh, this was the first uh, real adult novel that I read when I was a little kid. 
I've read it like every other year since. I love Dracula. And look at that fantastic cover. This is, of course, the edition uh, that I first read Dracula in. And yeah, I want to read it now because I've got it in my hand. I've got to put it down. Okay, number two. Some people are going to be surprised this is number two. You'd think it would be number one, but it's not. Number two. The Complete Fiction of H.P. Lovecraft. Yes, everything he wrote. Not all of it was great, but, you know, I love H.P. Lovecraft's work. Again, I read it multiple times. Every Monday I dedicate to this guy, after all. H.P. Lovecraft, The Complete Fiction. Man, this guy wrote like nobody else. So what could be number one? What could be number one on my list? You guys know. You guys know what number one is. What else could it be other than Arthur Conan Doyle's The Complete Sherlock Holmes? I love Sherlock Holmes. I love him. I did a whole video talking about how much I love Sherlock Holmes. That was a fantastic video. I don't know how you missed it if you did. I'll link some of these down below because, you know, I don't want you to miss out on all this glory. So yeah, The Complete Sherlock Holmes. I love Sherlock Holmes. You know what? I'm one of those Sherlock Holmes fans, you know? One of those that just like delves into the minutia. You know, I've got Sherlock Holmes all over the place. I've got two different annotated sets of Sherlock Holmes. I've got different editions of Sherlock Holmes everywhere. And this just happens to be one of the fancy ones I've got. So yes, The Complete Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I love this guy, and I love this book. Sherlock Holmes, Watson. What more is there to say? So I hope you enjoyed this list. It was kind of fun. It was kind of fun to do. My favorites. Uh, so, tomorrow, I think, to, is tomorrow Sunday? I think tomorrow Sunday. I'll have to check my calendar, because I'm doing these videos a few days ahead of time. Uh, so yeah, so that means we've got the Sunday Penguin, another surprise Sunday Penguin. This one's going to be a little interesting. Uh, and then we have, of course, Mythos Monday, the Dunwich Horror. And then I've got some other fun stuff lined up for next week. Oh, the excitement! Okay, guys, thank you for joining me once again here at Stately Vaughn Manor. I will catch you next time.